Hello and welcome to UK versus. We are fresh off the re season three EU regionals. Unfortunately, Richard was unable to attend, but we are joined by regional winner Mike Hardeman, who whose web camera is basically falling to his will as he didn't want to be on camera anyway, and his camera just decided to stop looking. <laughs> so, Mike, how are you doing after the weekend? Uh tired <laughs> it was a long weekend yeah i could imagine yeah uh hi everyone obviously i'm here as always and obviously thanks to mike for joining us <clears throat> yeah it was a, a shame i couldn't be there this weekend but i had a lot of fun cheering on my locals in our sort of group chats and sort of follow along how they were doing um but yeah it seemed like a really good event overall like pretty good turnout like 68 is pretty decent Still upset we didn't get one more for the funny number. <laughs> that is fair. It's your fault, Richard. It you is. were there. Funny number. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's it's there's a few fault. people we can blame. No, we blame Richard. He oh. wasn't there. That's fair. And how yeah. was your Saturday in London? Uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, just uh, went and saw the Tim Burton exhibition at the Design Museum. That was really cool. So for the new people that joined post 2022 and for people who have no idea who you are do you want to give a brief history of you and the game i mean i feel like most people know who i am already i've been on before but um yeah i've played this game for longer than some people who currently play it have been alive <laughs> um won a few things lost many more things have a couple of cards with my name on it. You know, the, the usual, really. And, you know, just all washed up these days, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, it has been like six years since I've last made a final, so, you know, no big, no big. You are also essentially the mentor of the Sheffield players. I mean, the current EU champion is a protege of yours. The season two winner is a protege of yours. Last year, Grant Padley, who also has cardboard, won a regionals, who is one of your protégés. So, but as, although people might not be aware of who you are if they join during MHA or post Worlds 2022, they will be aware of essentially your work with the player base. <laughs> I think I think a mentor is a, a bit of a stretch, more of a punching bag. The, yeah, definitely more of a punching bag, I would say. Um, especially when it comes to people like Grant and uh, Luke Quincy, and uh, not so much Liam these days. He, he's he's entered the realm of washed up has been already. But you know, <laughs> he did. He, I was a punch up. I was a punching bag for him for a while. So, uh, fair. To, uh, before we get into your debt list, the super secret training club has claimed another regionals. <laughs> Are you looking to take down Nats as well? Um, well, two of us might be judging, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, but I'm sure the I'm sure anyone who enters will be looking to uh, take down take down Nats for sure. Um, we just got to get them back on the grind. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, we have our own sort of pseudo super secret training club, like um, down here. So, like, on the Tuesday, um, I had a bunch, most of the guys that were growing up. Unfortunately, that, the guy who actually came in top four, Yash, was the only person that could make it. But we sort of, because one of the guys there went up, Gary, he owns the our LGS, which is closed on the Tuesday, but he can just open it. So, uh, a bunch of us just got, went down there an evening, uh, got the pizzas in, got the projector up, like the big the widescreen, whatever, and then just put up UVS Salt and kind of workshopped everyone's decks. Um, and that was really fun and really useful. And I think it sort of paid dividends in the end. So, yeah, I think it's quite nice to sometimes have those kind of groups to sort of group think and sort of talk stuff out. Yeah, I mean, it's not, re it's not really intended to be anything like that. It was just sort of a... Uh, Liam wanted, like, competitive testing against, like, comp decks because mm. uh, who he would play with most of the time was you know play weird off the wall stuff and get very uh tilted if that deck didn't work against something Liam was trying to make more competitive 
Mm. Uh, and then it expanded into Stephen wanting to be able to play a bit more. Um, like Greg was with me and Liam at Worlds when we were talking about it. So obviously he was he was included. Then we're just like, oh, you guys are playing? Oh, let me play. And I'm like, okay. And then, like, some of them got a bit bad at, like, uh, making sure they showed up on Sundays. So mm -hmm. I decided to threaten them with, if they don't get on with it, then uh, I'm going to kick them out and replace them. And we had a Jonathan, because Jonathan had started traveling with me and been around to qualifiers and, and championships and stuff anyway. So it made a lot of sense to, you know, bring him in and workshop stuff with him and obviously he's a very good very successful player in his own right so it's always useful to have um another pair of eyes on decks yeah, yeah, jonathan's yeah certainly that's, got, that's, um, sorry. yeah jonathan's what top uh, come second in both regionals now i fully expect him to top but in that's as well uh if not even win it he's long overdue at this point uh, yeah, I mean, he missed the, fir missed the first one because, as usual, he's on holiday. Uh, and then second place in season two and season three. There's, mm. I if if Jonathan doesn't top nuts something, he's either on holiday or something's gone very very wrong. Yeah. So yeah, let's... certainly that's something we have locally in terms of like, not necessarily playing meta decks and. You know, because we all just play what we want and it's sort of fun. But when it comes to sort of having to think about practicing for like these big events, like we didn't really have that. So, like, I put together smiling to terrorize them just to sort of, so they've got some, you know, so our locals have practice against that, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it's always good to have that sort of competitive practice, the, the sort of stuff you expect. I think we also had the advantage as well with these last two seasons is that we were last in the regionals. So we were able to, you know, just steal deck lists that maybe we hadn't really thought about, um, you know, from like NA and from OC. So we were able to get practice against things like Irwin specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously take inspiration from the Smiling Titan lists to adapt any lists we may have been playing. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We want your list we have up on the screen, but we won't uh, stay on it for too long because you have very graciously already done as a deck profile. I need to edit and get up quickly. But while we, we have people here watching already, uh, what drew you to back ago? There are a lot of casino cags out there that like, can run the death package, but what was it that drew you to back ago? So it's it is quite. A bit of a story, really. Uh, Liam's been on and off back ago since uh, Jetburn released. Um, he's gone out and he's XR'd all of the back ago cards, which is something he never does. He doesn't. He doesn't go out of his way to foil out decks like I do. <laughs> um, and he's constantly been on void, always void, because of like what was it, Binding Cloth Mastery from the Eraser Starter deck. Mm -hmm turn every foundation into a reluctant role model um did a lot of work reduced smash always felt relatively decent um and he always he always backed off the deck for one reason or another for like every event since jet burn and i when what was it when girl power released i decided to have a have a little bit of a crack of it off of uh, the death symbol because I just I just like death more and I find it a little bit more interesting, so I tried it out. Uh won a local qualifier with it and it felt pretty decent, but it was very much and then Godzilla came out and I felt like it wasn't playable anymore. And then when AOT came out, I started messing around with uh, an Aaron Jaeger list that would just mill as much as possible, uh, as fast as possible, and use all these when it hits discard pile, do the thing. And it was around about the same time that NA regionals happened. So then we saw the Aaron list and like, oh, this this is a real deck. So we worked on it a little bit, and then Midoriya on the move came out, and everything felt atrocious into Midoriya on the move. Uh, for the entire year, Luke Quincy's been terrorizing us locally with a Void Gin list, just incredibly slow methodical remove all of your attacks make you not be able to play the game and eventually either force you into deadlock and kill you or just kill you naturally with a pile of attacks 
And Midori was the natural evolution of this, because not only could he do that, but then he could now, you know, one shot you and the offense was far more dangerous. Uh, the flip side, like, flipping on, like, turn two, committing Harvey board didn't really matter when you've got such a strong defensive response. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were trying to find something that could compete against that, and we initially went back to the well of Bakugo. Uh, and it was working really well, because disarming glance is insane against it, and you, Bakugo is able to clear the attack that you disarm in glance, which turns off all abilities that add cards to the hand for the entire turn, which means all of the defense is offline, they have no hand because you discard no old Bakugo, and then Bakugo's hitting for huge numbers, so you kill them. But the deck felt a little bit clunky, and just before we started playing this Void build, Liam had built a meme death build using combined firepower and everything and something that just looked like a bit of fun and mess around deck uh, and then I played the void build on what was it I think it was Monday and it didn't feel great uh, so I decided to put some work into the death build it felt amazing it felt really good in testing we tested it out uh, made a few changes and then we just decided screw it let's have some fun and play it mm-hmm Oh, that that's makes sense. And it utilizes a lot of what the combined fire is looking for with its symbols. You get some pretty decent attunements. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's, yeah, it's, it's completely worked out for you. Uh, how did you feel when you heard like Midori was only represented on nine decks compared to like the sixty-eight people we had? I mean that that's that's a lot. That's a lot. It's more than it's more than ten percent of the for, of of like the format. So um, I wasn't surprised to see that many. Um, mm. I'm it's surprised there wasn't many. Of, a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't rush to the deck with only what two weeks, mm. two weeks before the event. And I don't think it's like the simplest deck to just pick up and play. Yeah, like you say, Luke's been playing Void for the entirety of the year, so him just swapping Jin with Midori is like a natural progression. But some people who've been playing more aggressive decks would probably struggle a bit more just making that immediate change to control. Yeah. Uh, how yeah, I'm, you... I'm still not a huge fan of Midoriya, but I might be in the minority and wrong, but I, I still don't think the character's all that. But... Um, like, I think he's fine, but I don't think he's anything crazy. So, how did you feel when you heard there was an air back ago list going around, and then also that it topped? Um, I mean, I didn't find out till about round six when Liam told me he played it in the previous round. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't even know there was a third back ago there. Um, but then I didn't even know it was on air until... Um, when was it? After after the event, after Swiss had finished, and that night when I put out the post about he is the top eight, and I wasn't sure on the symbol, so I just had to put question marks, and then uh, it was informed to me that like, it was on air, and I was like, oh, because like if you look at if you look at the uh, breakdown of every other character, it's all chaos and all death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we sort of, I mean, I think you have been kind of. Toing and throwing between void and air on back, and it wasn't like a, a meta core or anything. It was just like he really likes the character, right? Um, and I think air gave a lot more card draw and kraken. Um, kraken was a big deal for playing on air, and we did try and do more of the um, Luna to Harris thing. I'm still going, into it, we're still leaning into that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was my that was my original death build was uh, Luna Tiaris, uh, Rabbit Fix, Break Dancing, Force and Surrender, mm-hmm. doing all the death stuff to move things around and clear your card pool as much as possible and just play Luna Tiaris for free for yeah. Clean. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, how did you feel about going into your top eight matchup? Um. I hated it, <laughs> uh, in all honesty. Uh, obviously, Ben 
I've traveled, like, you know, he's local, travel around the entire country with him for this entire year, getting points and things. And, you know, we're good friends and enjoy each other's company and whatnot. And I really didn't want to be the person to either take him out or be taken out by him in the, in the top eight. That one, it is both to go as far as possible. And it only made it even worse when I found out that the next round of the bracket was either going to be Liam or Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you guys like, had Ben's been a lot of Chaos Godzilla. So like, I knew it wasn't going to be an easy match by any stretch of the imagination. But thankfully, I was able to take it. Yeah, no, makes sense. I mean, Sheffield had a huge representation in the top cuts and going even for like if you're looking to like the top 16 you guys still had a lot of representation there does the regular like monthly and weekly events does the amount you guys get to play and the level of players you get to play against make a difference in your opinion uh well we don't like so we don't actually really have events weekly uh we have like meetups where we'll just play and we'll jam games but like it won't always be universes. We might play like some board games. We might play a bit of Star Wars Unlimited or whatever we're feeling like that day. Like it's more of a hangout and play games together than specifically we are going to jam uh, universes and test for universes and things like that. It's just friends spending time together more than anything else. Uh, so the only real like quote unquote testing we do would be like in those monthlies. And even then, there's there's very competitive players and there's much more casually minded players so a lot of us aren't playing like the sweatiest of decks in these events we're playing you know we're messing around with um just more fun characters like maybe a vax or a vex or, i mean they're like two of the most recent ones i can think of <laughs> i know leon's been playing a lot of krista so you probably see him turn up with krista a fair bit yeah, yeah, he's he's played he's played a fair chunk of Krista for sure. Um, um, he'll, I'm sure he'll be back on Shoto at some point, knowing him. That's fair. So, so sorry, go. Um, no, you go. I've got my questions very specific. So, I'll you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I guess, I had a few questions on the deck list. To be honest, just um, sort of the the cards that that stand out. Um, and I guess sort of why they're in the deck. So deterioration palm seems oh. a not one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Friday night, I was uh, chatting a little bit with uh, Kevin Broberg. Just for like, mm -hmm. Kevin, please turn me off this deck. I, I feel like I'm being insane if I play this in the event. And he's like, oh, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I like it. It's, it's fun. Uh, it looks interesting. And um, I he was like, do we want some sort of way to destroy the casino pieces that we're, we're that we have to build because you know you don't, you're not always just going to yeah. casino them you can draw them and you have to play foundations and if we don't see unset is what's the name of it unsettling aura no yeah um, uh, frightening calm frightening calm yeah the one four uh, yeah. if you don't see that then you've got no way to you know trigger the remove costs to get your battle your uh, combine fire powers sometimes so if we had it on an attack, it was useful. And I thought of the very few Fury options that destroy a foundation, that would be the best one because mm -hmm. it lets me destroy one that I've already committed to pass a check to get yeah. a resource. Yeah, the card sucked. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, it, it, was, it was certainly sort of an outline. Like, I mean, I sort of get it, but is that really the best option? <laughs> There's a lot of cards like that that Mike does cover when we go through the deck okay. profile. Like Golden Death is another one that Mike would yeah, uh, put that in was that them. would probably get taken out. Um, yeah, Golden Death. Just I don't know. I don't think the card's necessarily very good. I think like, the two cards that showed up during regionals that were a product of the super secret testing were Disarming Glance and Strategic Meeting. Um, well, disarming glance, yes, hundred percent. That was that was one that we we spoke about a lot, uh, specifically to shut down Midoriya's response 
Uh, and it also just puts in a lot of work defensively or aggressively. Mm. Turning off Godzilla's Titan Cliffs is, well, it can be the difference maker between winning and losing. Yeah, yeah, I think just long answer solid. Like, uh, you know, I don't particularly question that one. Yeah, it's a card that hasn't has not seen enough play. Like, I've seen it in a couple of uh, King Ghidorah lists that have done well, um, combining it with um, the Kuragiri Foundation that bought, that puts an attack back to hand. But other than that, it's not really seen much play just yet. Um, but yeah, um, strategic me strategic maneuver. It's just that was fast, and that was. It was a card I was incredibly hyped with when the set released. Uh, Liam was a big fan of Golden Death pr when the Godzilla decks released. And just remove two, potentially draw two to three cards is sometimes game winning, mm. as long as you get it right. A strategic meeting, strategic maneuver, sorry, meeting's a different card. A, you, getting to do two in a turn feels amazing. So we were doing that. That was like the key thing in the Void build. But I cut Golden Death down quite a bit as the time went on because with the Death Build, Nuts Last was just far more useful to yeah. have in play. Uh, uh, but I wanted, I still wanted to have it in there as an option. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, to me, just two Jimmy Diva seems like Nuts Last five and six, and that's fine. Like, because it, it's quite important to you to have that sort of self mill almost constantly in order to trigger your casino shit in order to trigger your fire powers yeah the only other one i saw was rabbit kick i'm like why are we playing this i'm like oh you can discard your fire powers from the other hot ball okay that makes sense yeah 100 percent. and also you can uh there was many times where i would start a turn with a casino piece play a rabbit kick play a combine from hand rabbit kick kick the combine firepower then back a go kick the foundation remove it respond firepower and that firepower is now worth two on the rabbit on the one rabbit kick yeah yeah that I did, that was just like the thing i missed when i missed you i'm like how are we flipping stuff in a cop i'm like oh no wait wait combine firepower is also a non-attack card um <clears throat> but yeah other than that like it you know it seems like the sort of thing i'd expect from a, a death list i guess um That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, we're saying that Foster Center is a great one. I mean, uh, Adam Brown, who was running Erwin, added it in addition to what Kevin Brown was running at NA because you just get to me really mess about with it. Uh, yeah. Like I said, we won't stay on the deck too long because Mike was very good and uh, caught me in the middle of the draft to do a deck <laughs> profile. That's fair. Yeah, I just, uh, there were like my specific questions. I wasn't sure if you obviously even covered or not, but. Um... So, yeah, other than that, I guess, yeah, obviously, you know, watching from home, I mean, while well, watching, sort of following along <laughs> in the group chat and, and sort of constantly refreshing the the site. Um, yeah, it just sort of it seemed like a really good event. Like, I was surprised at how little smiling there was. Um, with it sort of being the boogeyman, because um, there was only two, which uh, you know, obviously I don't know who the second one. The other one was some cringy Nathan guy. Um, yeah, I think I think the I think the lack of smiling thing may also be down to just how you are intensive the deck is. Yeah, that was one of my theories of just how bloody expensive. Like, I don't. I think with uh, my combined locals. I don't think we could put a smiling deck together. Yeah, who'd want a deck that was nothing but you are as a regional? <laughs> um, so yeah, that might be part of it. Part of it might be because people think, oh, everyone's gunning for smiling, so I don't want to be the target. But um, yeah, like I, I suspect some of it might just be card availability, like just getting. Because I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't even, I don't think we've got a place set of the the ten diff between us locally. Yeah. I mean, additionally, it may have been um, a meta call with people thinking uh, Midoriya would be a heavy presence because he has a pretty good game into smiling. Yeah. So yeah, it, it may have been it may have been that. It, uh, I think it was a combination of the fact smiling hadn't won anything, 
that people had enough time to practice the Irwin list that was able to handle smiling so well. And mm, I think there was more Kevin Broberg that managed to handle smiling so well. I, I don't know. The, the list is very, very cool. And I know Adam handled some very aggressive decks quite well as, on his own. And that, as you said, Midoriya has such a great game into smiling as well that it was kind of just... I don't know how many... Mizuku's Nathan faced, but I know Yazo faced four with his back go. Uh, Yasha. Yeah, Yasha. He had Yasha had a hell of a run in, in regionals. Yeah, I'm so so proud of Yasha. Like, um, just in general, like my locals. Obviously, you know, we haven't quite got the accolades of the Sheffield gang, but you know, these guys have only been playing for sort of a year, year and a half. Um, and obviously, it was really—it was a shame I couldn't go up. But like you know, the four other guys went up, and going into so at the end of round five, um, they were all on nine points. So they were all sort of capable of getting that double win and conceivably getting on the fifteen points on the you know the five and two. Um, and you know, Yash made it, and you know he was obviously shocked, you know, because he's never made a top cut before, and then ends up sort of getting through to top four. So yeah, just just really, really proud of him. Um, and yeah, we were all like really, really hyped that he got in there. Um, now, let's talk about the most humbling round that you had, that I had, <laughs> and that many people had for that event, and that is Reiner. I didn't. I didn't play against Reiner. You didn't play against Reiner. No, no. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Uh, is it Dave who was a Rhino? Dave, yeah, yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave brought a Rhino deck that was specifically designed to stop the Casino Smiling Titan super aggro kind of decks, and it did its job. It was an absolute beast of a deck. I mean, Dave, despite despite what results may look like these days, is a beast of a player and has been since day one. Uh, he is... Um, when I when I was new to the game, he was one of the best players in the game. Um, he was constantly like second in nas- second national teams, singles, constant accolades within the game. Um, before finally winning a couple himself, um, but always a top four finals competitor throughout the history of the game. Uh, and now he's coming back with uh, these days a little bit more, and yeah, I think it's gonna pay. I think it's gonna pay off, and we'll be seeing him in top cuts again sooner rather than later. I think during the event, people were talking about the Rhino on Discord, and Tim Keith talked about his one experience with Dave and the fact that he milled him out in top cuts throughout the in like <laughs> over a couple of hours, <laughs> which. Is pretty hilarious because that's not Dave's style at the slightest. <laughs> but no, it's, yeah, it's great to see the players that people don't really know because of them, that have the 18 years of history of the game or 10 years of history of the game that haven't had the accolade that they deserve from the MHA onwards players. I mean, yourself has gone to Worlds in 2022. You've top multiple events and you're a name that a lot of people know but our friends over the pond won't know you as well as the people in the uk so it's great to see these old heads getting the recognition they deserve nah everyone knows mike everyone knows mike i was gonna say if if they if they've played for longer than mha they know me from the amount of times i've been over but if they but post mha they might not know you as well especially if they came in after say 2023 yes that's fair <clears throat> there's there's a lot of new blood that doesn't know or have the kind of respect for the old guard especially the uk old guard that they should uh i don't have a respect for anyone i'm waiting for murray's return so that people be like where has he been hiding <laughs> speaking of murray can we can we just take a moment to uh to put in a formal complaint for him trying to gas out both of the finalists as we sat down to play the final. <laughs> was, was he a windy boy? Uh, he sure was. <laughs> I always thought his favourite sim was all, not air. Oh. Surely at that point it's not air, it's death. 
Yeah. Oh, it was it was certainly something. Intake <laughs> <laughs> pestilence symbol. But yeah, I guess any other sort of uh, takeaways from the event for you, Mike? Like in terms of sort of how it went down, like the the, the meta, the people, that sort of stuff. I mean, obviously the people are great. The people are always great. Um, the meta, like I I enjoyed playing my deck a lot. And I think people who hadn't seen something like it before enjoyed seeing it. But I do recognize that UVS does seem to have this terrible track record at the moment where they're printing a lot of cards that are fun for the player, but not for the opponent. Mm. Um, A lot of, you know, like, just giant nukes and attack aborts and things like that. I think we need to scale that back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, as as smiling, it's really fun putting plus six, plus six on a six ten throw. Yeah. It's really not fun for my opponent. No, it's really not. Like I I like as soon as AOT came out, I I built a life smiling deck with all the backup stuff in it and it was I played it against Liam like the first half like the first wednesday after aot and we both found it absolutely hilarious he was on he was on mikasa and i go here's what beast titan calls oh you took 12 from that um i respond oh i hit an attack titan attacks i'll form oh you're dead mm-hmm. and we both found it absolutely hilarious that all these six checks were there and you know all these giant moves and putting these giant stats but after like the third time you you, you know you can see that like oh you know that the, the life's draining out of them a little bit. Yeah. They're not enjoying it so much. Yeah. And I mean, that was sort of my experience sort of playing it to, to, you know, test against the locals. And it's just like, did you see again, Kiowa? A cape. You didn't. Whoopsie daisy. I know. Yeah, really. I know Kai's been playing a, a, a version of the Super Mill Erin list with the combined five powers and the Azores. And Stephen Claxton was messaging me basically saying, you're playing solitaire. You just you get one turn, and then you just sit and watch your opponent play for 20 minutes. And... That is the Dredge experience. Yeah. And he seems as to someone, be the last kind of someone who enjoyed have a minute. playing Dredge in Magic, that is the Dredge experience. Well, no, he was playing. He, he was just talk, talk, talking about playing against uh, Kai in like, casual or the Tuesday events that happened. And it seems to be the kind of meta that we have at the minute, where it's a case of, if you don't die... You just have to hope your opponent bricks or, you, or just sits there. I mean, I got very lucky against Adam that I just didn't get too old. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a weird situation the game is in at the minute. And I think, to me, there are a couple of outliers that probably need to get kneecapped, and that would be smiling and combined. Um, there is some people asking for a City <laughs> Rampage to get hit as well. No, I see that page is fine. It's not. It's really not. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, speaking of outliers, speaking of things that need to get changed on arrival, I, Mike, how hyped are you for your AOT pre-release on Saturday and what you're hoping to pull on Sunday? Sorry, yeah. Sunday. I mean, it'd be nice to be one of these lucky so-and-sos like Rocco and Sean who pull a Chrome in a pre-release. <laughs> That'd be quite nice, you know? Uh, I'd take any of them. I don't really care. You know, Chrome is a Chrome to me, and they look pretty. Um, what I'm, just look, I'm just looking forward to the new card. Just looking forward to playing with some of the new cards and uh, opening product and, you know, watching the meta shift to something new, hopefully. If I ask what I, you're looking forward to in the set, I wonder what happens if you pull an Annie Chrome now. Do you just play the Titan face, or do you have to go get the first face? Uh, I imagine it's just not playable. Oh, like I'd say, I imagine it's the same for any of the Titan Chromes, right? You know, they're not the starting side, so you can't play them. Uh, yeah, that's he's very down true. a character. just down a character. You know, he's sets that are designed yeah, to draft, so. and then they don't have a character in the pack. Well, no. are you looking forward to pulling as one of your ultra rares a blank five low four? Uh. Well, I, I don't know what that is. It's the the cart Titan Rush. It's just the it's a five low four. It's a four check though. Up, it's, a it's a five four, four check. I, I'll be honest. I've read every card in the set 
approximately once <laughs> and then moved on with time because the the previews didn't really leave time to you know sit it was very here's the previews and then here's some more previews and then here's even more cards so so I've not really it was a lot more organized than AOT one's previews though so we've got to give props to that <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to the pre-release promo. That that card looks really pretty. It's really pretty. I'm I'm upset I don't get one. I'm sure I'll be able to find one somewhere. But I mean, I think in general, four check attacks are a mistake. But oh, they're fine. They're fine. Um, I think in general, in general, the four check attacks they've been outside of Smiling Titan. I'd call it a success because they're all really cool. They're not. They don't. They haven't like warped the meta the way. A lot of us old heads thought they would. No, I mean maybe if you took smiling out of the equation, yeah, I might feel differently about them. But yeah, like as I say, smi- smiling just warps it so much because it puts so many stats on them. Yeah, I am very excited for teaming with the attack titan though. Mm. Devil Jin is going to absolutely love that card. <laughs> exactly. Any other cards or characters you're excited to get your hands on in uh, Origins of Power? Um, I'll have to have a quick look <laughs> uh, while you're having a quick look we've got a question in chat asking do you think Midoriya is the one that performs best against Valentine or is there another character you'd recommend um, yeah I think I think Midoriya is by far the best for it um, Void Symbol having access to Cape and Barrier Shield and Midoriya's response on both sides, while also being able to put out a similar level of damage once the game gets established, is exactly what you need to be able to keep up with her. I mean, Richard uh, raises a good point. Toru is good, but if they can check well enough, she's not as impactful. But if you uh, can zero out you one get, attack, you get things like uh, Jeremy, right? Like struggle, you get to struggle against Jeremy as well. Yeah. I think zero out in one attack and then barrier shield in the next one just put, you put smart in such a bad position. Yeah, the, pro- the problem with the problem with the character like Tora is yes, she's she's great at shutting down Smiling's offense, but she needs the offense herself, and she doesn't get that off face. Yeah, she doesn't really have the chance yeah. to kill. We were kind of toying with the idea of playing four check Toru. And... <sighs> yeah, I thought about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, you know, your your offense is a 6'10 throw. Catch. So, in regards to AOT2, yeah, the, yeah, I, I remember now there's a few cards I'm excited for. Soup. Soup. Um, I'm very excited for Erwin, Hanji, and uh, Sasha. Do you think Bertel yeah. and Kart are getting day one in Ratters? I Cart is obviously just a uh, oops we we didn't think about the application within the actual game and this is how it should work so functional rot is going to be more than enough for Cart Titan yeah. that's definitely going to happen Bertolt needs something but I don't even know where you begin with him because he's just there's just so many so many problems yeah Bertolt is Bertolt is an issue Uh, looking even more forward, we've got Soul Leveling, we've got Star Trek before we even get towards Nats. Uh, is anything of that got you hyped? Mm, I, need to, I need to see the cards. I, I like the look of some of the Star Trek characters, even if they are a little weak, you know, objectively a little weaker than what we've had recently. Um, I really like Boimler because drawing cards is always fun. And, you know, it gives your opponent a card as well, so at least they don't feel bad. <laughs> that makes sense. I was talking with someone over the weekend about Tendi, and they were trying to... We were having a discussion over, like, why would you ever give your opponent plus one? It's like, oh, but they can do it. Like, no, they can't. It doesn't say playable by either player. You get to choose when you, your opponent gets plus one to the check. You're like, oh, well, yeah, her kit is probably going to be very strange for re- messing with your opponent's checks. No, I mean, it's just... Uh... The wording is there for multiplayer, right? Yeah, I That's think the way it is. 
if it is with that in mind, like you put, you go, oh, uh, this is a free play game. My my other opponent's getting attacked. I'll I'll heal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just being quiet. But yeah, I think if it's designed with multiplayer in mind, then yeah, I would just love tending to have some kind of vindictive health gain check manipulation sort of thing, like passive aggressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they obviously they want to push the the sort of collaborative Briarwood type experience, right? You know, they, there's, there's clearly something they're doing because they've got the, the box top of things coming in um, critical role. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if there is a similar thing, whether that's like a an event based thing or or what have you via you know with that comes along with the um, the lower decks decks. Who shows us being in the call? Yeah, because you just do the thing as a loop, right? I am muted. I apologize. Yeah, we just uh, I was muted for that bit. So yeah, we're just talking about if uh, Cat Titan doesn't get errated on Friday, then yeah, it's just going to be poor Cat Titan win. Uh, just one second, I just need to reconnect you. I'll let Richard do some waffling while we connect you. Yeah, so for those that, that don't know the, the thing with Cart Titan, right? He has a form, Tenacious, ready this card, commit one foundation. The next foundation you try to play ignores progressive difficulty or your rival commits one foundation. Um, <clears throat> the idea being is that, you know, you're committing one to make them commit one or, you know, build a foundation. The way it's worded says you can ready Cart Titan and then commit Cart Titan um to pay the cost of that ability because obviously you can always pay commit characters to pay the cost of committing a foundation so you ready cart titan commit cart titan they commit one ready cart titan commit cart, cart titan they commit one and you just, yeah, you just form, commit their board go in um well, welcome back mike okay i guess i, I guess uh, my camera's frozen. <laughs> no, I'll yeah. uh, I'll put the meme back over your face. No. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, it clearly should didn't work like that. So, um, you know, the idea being is, you know, you enhance, commit, give something three speed, form, ready it, commit a foundation, they commit one. Yeah. Uh, entwine anytime yeah. you can't commit it for stun, you can't commit it for that kind of cost. But anything that says commit one foundation or if you need to pass a check, you can commit your character. So if you check yeah. a three on a FOD cost attack with card titan, you commit card titan and you're ready to go. Yes. So if your opponent has the ability that says either stun or you commit one foundation, you can't choose your character to pay to... You can't substitute your character for a foundation when resolving an effect. But when you're paying a cost on your side, so for example, you, uh, uh, rescue completed is an old card the I can think of. You know, it says enhance, commit one foundation plus two or minus one. No, minus two plus one speed. I think it's the last one played that one. You can commit your character to pay that cost. Similarly, with the way Cart Titan's worded, his commit one foundation. You can commit Cart Titan um, to pay that cost. I don't know what the wording would need to be in order to stop that happening, whether that's commit one other foundation um, 
or commit one foundation other than this card or something. I don't know what the, the correct... Uh, I know there's one new feature in Origin of Power that Mike is very excited for, and that's wall tokens. <laughs> yeah, love a new, love a new, love a new, uh, love a new, love the addition of tokens. Uh, I'm very, very excited to see the uh, token card for these walls. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, looking even further into the future, we got Critical Role, we've got Guilty Gear, we've got uh, in more AOT. And going off the deck boxes you purchased, that there's one that you're very excited to get get out of your hands on next year. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about TMNT and your collection of deck boxes you you have now. <laughs> yep, very excited, very excited for TMNT. Uh, obviously, child of the '90s, grew up with it. Um, just very much looking forward to see how they adapt it. Michelangelo has been my identity for a long time now. So I'm excited to play I'm excited to play him. And also Michelangelo is a party dude. He is a party dude. I remember the theme tune. So do I so do I. <laughs> and I remember getting into arguments with people who told me it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over here when it was actually Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Yes, because ninjas implicate violence. Yep. Despite yep. the fact they've all got weapons. But... Yep. <laughs> this guy has a sword. This guy has nunchucks. But, you know, can't call yeah. them ninjas. We can call them heroes, though. But it's fine. It's one of those... Uh, the South Park movie words at the best. It's because graphic violence is perfectly fine as long as no one says any naughty words. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, I will be buying the uh, South Park deck boxes to go with my uh, TMNT boxes when they when they come out. Are you going to be buying the Turtle Mobile deck box box? No, it's too expensive. <laughs> I've seen they've now got a Krabby Patty deck box box for all the SpongeBob stuff. They're like what? They're like sixty to seventy pounds for those boxes. I'm not. Oof. I'm not made of that sort of money. I don't need a. I don't need a box for my deck boxes. Yeah, I've got a bag. That's why they get stuck <laughs> yeah. in there. You can't really display your team and T collection if you, if they're inside there. Exactly. Exactly. I've got to have them all piled up on the table. Uh, so in twine, obviously, when it comes to turtle stuff, I guess we'll get into a lot more speculation. But that'll be if you want some speculation. Year. We do already have two theories up on the channel. One of which came out today, one of which came out last week. Uh, one of which Hitch from the design team has already debunked because I thought the new series was coming up next year. Apparently it's coming up this year, so I just look like an idiot. But that's nothing new. In a shocking <laughs> twist of events. <laughs> Brett being wrong? No. no just because I'm wrong about when it comes out does not mean I'm wrong about the fact that we're doing that series. If if Post Malone can spend a couple of million getting hold of the one one ring, if we can get him into this game, that's going to be big. Why would I hit talk about T, about that TMT that much? We're here to talk about Mike and his amazing run at regionals, and the fact that he had to face so many locals to get there. Yeah. So I guess what was your hardest match over the weekend? I mean, I lost one match, so I guess it was that one. <laughs> who, who beat you and what was your guest oh, my local rocker on earth biaco okay it was a rough deck it was a rough deck it was, it was yeah i i have played against rocco on biaco more than any other person i can safely say that and he just has the best look against me with that deck the amount of tutoring Kirishima as he hits to flip my board, the amount of attacks he draws. He always has uh, a referee jury in hand. Referee jury he draws <laughs> every time. Um, yeah, uh, but the, you'll see you'll see the video soon enough. The game wasn't the game was not even a game. Uh, he absolutely bodied me. Um, my deck didn't really want to play the game that round. Guess it just. I guess Bako was just a little bit tired and ready for lunch. 
We don't uh, really have too much defense, right? No, Just no, we don't really have too much. But like, you don't really have like speed reduction of oh. any sort. Biako doesn't really care about speed. He just cares about big yeah. number. Big number go burr. You see, I had the opposite experience with Rocco. He did care about speed. He was he had that foundation that gives double... You know, gives, Thunderous you know, roar, yeah. Yeah, it's like... It gives speed equal to the number of my foundations times two. Yeah, that's quite that's quite a new adaptation for his deck. That plus... Um, what is it? The um, Beast Summoning. Yeah. Like before pre AOT he was on like a pretty much all lows build. Now he's now he's mostly on highs with beast summoning. Um and he's just got a good he's, he has got a good mixture of zones because I did see the falling skies in his deck. I was like, but you've got so many zones and then my head went, Yeah, but he gives it ridiculously stupid amounts of damage and he just gives it a throw. It's like, Oh yeah. Yeah, he, he doesn't need highs in his pool to make falling skies broken. No. If you see if you see the list is mostly high with like Boot Basher, uh, yeah. and then be yeah. summoning Rocco. Whenever you're going in for the kill, he always has the referee jury in hand, and then he stacks a referee jury to draw another referee jury. Yeah. I think Every I time. only won our game because he checked so poorly he had to commit Biakugo. Yeah, like I was, I had one turn against him in one of the games where I would have been able to kill him, um, and I drew one attack. <sighs> oh. So I just I just couldn't, and then he just smushed me the next turn. As I say, the video the video for that will come out soon enough, and you know you can see how how humble he it's, makes me. It's another great example of a of, of a player who is so close to topping these events, and we'll probably see coming out swinging at nuts. Yeah, I mean he's he only started um, about exactly a year ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, he started just after Nationals last year, uh, and he stuck with it, and like just played so many games and found a character he really likes, and from there he's just grown and grown and grown. I say he was what one win away. He was X two at the last regionals, um, one win away from potential top cuts this regional. So he he'll get there, and he's he's won a bunch of local championships now as well, and yeah, he's well on his way to making to worlds. So seeing as it's popped up quite a lot during this regionals, and it's been a hot topic for other content creators and players. How do you feel about IDs in to the tournaments? Because I know during this event, people hit four wins, and then they were just IDing where they could to secure. And then they decided cuts. they couldn't do maths and ID'd. Yeah. Um... It's hard to say. Like, obviously, it's something that's always going to exist. You can't, you can't stop it from happening unless you make it so that draws are a double loss. Like, no matter what, there's going to be, there's going to be IDs. And like, what you're going to, what are you going to do? They sit there for the entire hour and play one foundation a turn and go zero zero draw. Yeah. Um, like, it's something that has to, you know, it's something that's going to exist. You can't, you can't stop it. So I personally evil. don't like IDing like maybe more than once um, because they don't, I don't think it chain, it alters like the tournament enough. Like I like people to have like a chance to be able to make it in. Uh, I'll be honest. I did, I, I did ID with Liam in round six, but we were not guaranteed to either. Neither of us were guaranteed to top cut at that point. We were both four one. Um, but we decided to, we neither of us wanted to knock the other out, you know, pot potentially knock the other one out. Uh, and we're playing a, you know, we're playing, we're playing the casino. We're gonna see what happens, and you know, play the last round. And if we make it, we'll make it. If we don't, we don't. And you know, it was our own decision to do that. Oh, he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got Jonathan in. We've got Jonathan chat saying that he'll not be ID IDing three rounds again. I mean, it's three hours of your life you're not getting back. <laughs> and so, like, I, IDs are a thing, right? They exist. They're going to be necessary. They're, they're not necessary, but they, they, they just exist, and it's fine, right? Um, so I think the in your example where it's like, okay, we both need to win a round either way, so we may as well take the ID here and play for the best possible result of us both get both winning the next round or both getting in and not knocking the them out. Totally fine with that one. Like you know, you're just trying to not team kill. Totally okay. 
at the end of the tournament, you know, when you're high in Swiss and you know the intentional draw guarantees you into the top cuts, whether that's the last or the, you know, penultimate round, you know, you can double ID in or single ID in, totally fine. Um, what the the guys did at this one, I don't necessarily have a moral issue with it. Like, if you want to ID and not do it, that's your call. It was just really terrible from a maths perspective and from a actually, like, getting into top cuts. Yeah. Um, it was really bad. And basically, Nathan got really lucky that Brett won his last round because if Brett loses, then Nathan gets bumped out. And Kai I gets popped, it, popped in. I, did I bubble Kai again? Oh, no, no, uh, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bubble Kai. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I mean, I think actually that triple ID probably helped Yash in terms of being able to get in at because I think there would have been far less uh, five twos if they hadn't done that. I, I um, no, I think if everyone had played out, it would have been what one seven and zero, oh, three six and ones, and then I've not done all the more math. There's going to be some in. draws in there, right? I, I just think it would have been harder for a five two to get in, <laughs> um, and. Like there was, there was certainly one table um, on the at the last round where they ID'd and basically both knocked each other out by doing so. <laughs> yeah. That made no sense. And I can my only assumption there was they both just didn't want to play the next day. They didn't give a shit, and they were just no. Like, they they, did, they they just did the math wrong from what I heard. Oh, because <laughs> one of them thought... didn't have enough points but was guaranteed to be out and the other person didn't have good enough breakers yeah uh, so they did the math in a way that like one of them should be in and the other one might be in based off of a million things but yeah they just did, they did the math wrong and didn't realize that yeah both of them would be knocked out yeah it just it felt like people got lost in the source and i think iding after round four was madness yeah. Like that is not your, you know, the the EV from doing so, um, and your to in terms of maximizing your chance of making top cut, that was probably other than scooping. That's your worst option because yeah. IDs are terrible for your breakers. Like you're not getting enough points by doing so. You might ID ID and then get paired into someone that has to play, and therefore you know you haven't got a chance to rack up a win earlier. Like there's just so many things that were tactically wrong with it, and they basically got really fucking lucky. Yeah, I mean, I I don't really per- personally. I don't like the idea of IDing more than once. Hmm. Uh, I understand why people do it. You know, when the EXO going into the last two rounds, yeah. but for me, like I want I you know I want as good of a swiss stand in as possible to get that yeah. potential but you know get that potential uh you know higher seed going first sort of thing and yeah, you know exactly. some, people, some people just care about like top cutting not necessarily what happens once you get there that's yeah. fine and um, mm-hmm. but like for me i wouldn't do more than one in an event if i was confident um and also right, well, I, I will id when it mathematically guarantees me top cuts or in the situation that you and Liam had where I don't want to do a team kill and this is the the best result. Well, I know yeah. I know during season one when we were paired in round five and we were both four and oh, I did offer the ID to make sure we both guaranteed top cuts. And you literally just told me, Yeah, I want to make sure I get the highest standing in Swiss. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of the moves that's been really good is the in just in card games in general, the forever is the highest in Swiss in terms of seeding gets to go first because it's, exactly. a, it's an advantage right so yeah um, i was uh i was very disappointed when uh my breakers dropped me from first to fourth in swiss after, after all the results are in <laughs> yeah but yeah i just think it was it was madness like you know like you know i've taken risky ids before like at the first stats right i did with nathan in the last round i knew i wasn't mathematically in but at the same time, I'm an old man. I was fucking knackered, and it was Tokyo Mi Biojiro. It was a terrible matchup, so I may as well take my chances with the ID. Um, but like, yeah, I, I think they're going to be a thing. I just think this one was they got lost in the source and they got fucking lucky because in because yeah, I, I just think at least half of them could have just got knocked out and because yeah. their breakers weren't good from doing all those IDs. 
and they got yeah, back yeah. didn't. And that, but that's also why they did it. I mean, Nathan was there as Smiley Titan. As he goes further, as he goes higher up in rounds five, six, and seven, he's going to come across players who are prepared for Smiley Titan. So for him, it makes perfect sense to try and ID all those rounds to guarantee top cuts. Yeah, but Lane, Nathan, if they were listening to Nathan, they were listening to the wrong person. He just doesn't want to play and wants to go play one piece. So if they were taking all their advice from Nathan, then they made a mistake. The, uh, I don't believe Nathan was uh, particularly involved with this. Okay. <laughs> he just went with it. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think with Nathan, he's just like, his his level of investiture is reasonably low in terms of I... what games he plays and where he actually comes. I think Nathan talks a big game, but actually cares about idea about topping a lot more than he likes on. No, of course, does everyone likes winning, right? Who doesn't like winning? But anyway, let's not dwell on. And he gets special much. cuddles from Mike when he does. So, so uh, we won't keep you too much, uh, Mike, because you've had a hell of a weekend, and I know you're still catching up on sleep. Uh, so. What the big question of the season? I asked everybody else while I was doing the other top eight interviews. What can UVS do to enhance your player experience? Less product. And yeah. just reduce the amount of sets, reduce challenger, or just reduce all of it. Just less releases. There's this year they've released more product than they ever have, um, and there has been less events than there ever has. Uh, you, we've had one event with AOT and AOT 2 is coming out this weekend you know Americans don't even get an event with um, in the tech in the Tekken format in the Dark Hero format you know it's just there's there's too much there's too much coming out too quickly and you know it's just too it's just too much like it's going to cannibalize players I know, I know there's play there's players locally that have stopped playing because they just can't keep up or won't keep up with the amount of releases um it's it's hurt my wallet quite a bit this year <laughs> with the amount of releases um and yeah i just want i you know i i want to be able to enjoy playing with these cards rather than thinking oh what's the next thing what's the next thing? i mean we just finished aot previews and people are already asking for so where's Star Trek previews? Where's Solo Eleven previews? Where's Heroes of Alexandria previews? Mm-hmm. Like, there's no time to let anything breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah and especially with the, the 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 reasonably low frequency of events. Like, even just like you know, we don't have like a effectively like a Magic Online or whatever, right? To sort of get data and ha- let meta games breathe. Um, it's just all at a local level, you know. Hope, assuming yeah. people have got locals, right? Um, so yeah, I think, I don't know what, I think the, um, like four booster sets a year is probably fine as long as they're not, I mean, that's that's standard for most card games. I have no problem with four boosters. Personally, I would prefer three with small releases in between. Yeah. I think three with three with the challenges like would be okay, but like four, is also fine, but you then can't release as much ancillary product. You can yeah, say like, the challenges like the four bloody Star Trek ones at Christmas. That's insane. Like, huge amounts of challenger decks, right? Um, Do you think the size of AOT one also impacted with that because of how much people had to yeah. spend to get hold of their places and the cards they need, and then immediately were thrown into here's the Zuku. Here's Tekken, yeah. and you also need to travel for regionals. Yeah, hundred percent. Like the set was like, let's you know, everyone said the set was too big. As soon as as soon as it was announced, it was in the three hundred card set. Everyone was saying the set was too big. Um, there is a nice, healthy middle ground where set sizes can be. Like we have had eighty card sets in the past. We have had. 100, 100 for a long time 100 and like 99 to 109 was the well 108 was like the 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 size that they went for uh and i don't mind i, mean, I don't mind sets a bit bigger than that i don't mind that you know the next set is what 182 but 300 is just too much there's too many too many rares too many ultras too many secret rares 
Yeah, someone yeah. in chat is saying that the Star Trek Challenger series is going to have as many cards as pre MHA booster boxes. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Yeah, so yeah. in Twine, no, they're not getting a booster deck. It's four challenger decks, as Daniel just said in chat. Yeah, I like, I understand the reasoning for why they did AOT the way they did. Obviously, you know, we've we've covered this on, on previous conversations on the channel. I just think it's it's been a bit of a failed experiment, unfortunately, yeah. with a lot of what they've tried. I understand what they were doing. I I sort of I'm, I'm sort of okay with them trying stuff, but um, I don't think they is necessarily landed um, the the way they wanted to. Certainly, from my experience, it may be at a more global level. It, it has, and hopefully, it has. Right, I, I want it to be successful, but. From my experience, it hasn't been. Um, but I like the idea of maybe having at least one or two of those boost sets. Well, yeah, they could be like a an 80, 100 card booster set. Right? They don't have to be these 190 cards. They could just be smaller sets with maybe smaller print ones, right? So they don't necessarily have to print loads of them. They're smaller sets, easy to pick up. Yep. But yeah. Um, I think less um, doing less with Chrome Rares would be nice as well because while it's nice to open a chrome rare there's not you don't need five or six every single set because all it does is mean that well that set's not reprintable and then you know it it devalues the market they they they've said many many times about wanting to get into like more of a collector's market and things like that but the collectors need to be able to collect. And if you're releasing all this stuff all the time, then they're not going to collect. And people want the price, you know, they want a certain price for these things because they are rare. Um, and by having them every single set, it's not as exciting or interesting mm -hmm. for people to open who are like opening a lot of product anyway. And then they just don't move. So you've got single sales who single sellers who have a lot of product that they can't move. Um, and then they're opening more product to get, you know, to open then you've got people, individuals who are opening a bunch of product to try and find these chrome rares, flood the market, reduce the price of everything, make everything not worth anything. So the players don't want to pay for to open product, which means stores are gonna buy less. And it's yeah, just like, all it's just all an often effect. Yeah, here is clash is a, a disaster in that. Yeah. Thing, like you know but um, that was also the you know the fact that there was the first ed and the unlimited yeah, yeah. um and if there was just the first ed it might have not been as bad but now Maybe, we're in a situation but, like they were sort of it was the first chrome rares right Here yeah Earth. so just because it was still in this sort of it was a little bit still in the, the honeymoon period yeah, and there was a lot of collectors that just bought case upon case upon case and flooded yeah. the market, and it was just it was great as a player in theory because like you know all the good cards are pennies, but just from a actual health of the game, it was horrific. I mean, um, uh, when I went to my local qualifier just after AOT dropped, I went to Stronghold went to play there. And I was like, can I get a pack of AOT? And like, no. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, yeah, the One Piece players keep coming in the weekends and buying them all, hunting chromes, and then, like, chucking the cards they get to other players if it isn't a chrome. I was like, oh, yeah, cool, I can't access the product because of the chromes. Mm. But, yeah, like, look at Dark Tournament. Like, that's a very powerful set for standard. You know, mm. there's many cards that people will want that now are skyrocketing price because, well, they won't read that it's very unlikely they'll reprint it because Chrome Rares exist in the set and they don't want oh, to. Yeah, I think they've it. said it's just that's it. What, yeah, what's it's, gone, it's, gone. it's sold out of the warehouse once it's gone. Yeah, it's gone now. yeah uh, so it's, well, it's gone and that that set's going to be legal till what 2026? Yeah, so if new players that's come in, they will not be able to get access to what the dog, Arm the Wolf, Ice Sword Aurora, Execution, Aurora. Botan's Coaching. Unless they go to uh, Rich's local Gary, who has about 20 that he's personally hoarding. <laughs> he is hoarding a lot of all the dogs, and then he's going to be really sad when he gets banned. Um, so we do have what I'm going to class as a controversial p opinion by self-proclaimed Mike Hardeman <laughs> school student Kieran Holden that AOT being as big as it is, is gives some safety from rotation because even though when they rotate, we'll still have lots of cats to choose from. Yeah, we uh, had this discussion over the weekend. 
That would be the case if all 12 symbols were represented. But in March, we lose two sets and six symbols lose a lot more than six other ones. And that, that wasn't the, the theory, right? The the reason for the big set. And I, and I think just with the way rotation is, you don't need to make a big set for that to be the case. It was just to make spotlight a thing, um, which it just sort of hasn't really been. I mean, it isn't because it's such a terrible <laughs> sealed format in itself. Yeah, because, you know, it's smiling. Yep, we played we played one spotlight event and went, yeah, we're not touching this again. Yeah. Have you tried MHA spotlight yet? Uh, yes, we did do a MHA spotlight um, qualifier up in Gateshead. Uh, it was quite fun, like, despite the fact that it had only been nine months without MHA1, it was quite nice to revisit a lot of those older cards. And Oh, mate, I'm no. with you there. Like, we've been doing locally the uh, opposed pairs. So we had a fire versus... So no, our first one was good versus evil. Our second one was fire water. And I can't remember what we're doing for the third one now. I think it might be error. But the theory is that everything's legal in terms of MHA1 onwards. Mm. Everything? Um, yep. Back alley? Well, no, I mean, ban list to ban list, right? Oh, but, okay, okay. That's not everything's yeah. legal then. Well, you know what I mean, Matt, as in like MHA1 up to AOT1, everything, you know, everything that's been printed from MHA1 onwards is legal. Uh, um, and even then, like we, <laughs> for some reason, we allowed my child to play some Mortal Kombat stuff because he likes playing Mortal Kombat um, <laughs> cards, and it didn't really matter. Uh, I, did, I did say he couldn't play Pon Chi one though. Dan, um, aka, if you're talking about the format where MHA is legal within like all the still standard stuff, I don't see it as the heroic standard uh, format. I see it as the Spanish format because they've been playing that since day one. That is just what Spain plays. Yeah, I mean, sort of, whatever you want to call it, heroic, modern, like, but I, I think... Just it's call it Spanish of, standard. It's been a lot of fun um, going back and playing these old cards and just... Obviously, there's some silly stuff in it, but in theory, there's a silly stuff for everyone. I mean, like, you know, getting to play Jiro with all the three diff attacks that are both charge a weapon and AOT1 was nuts. Um... Getting to go back and play Tokyo Army again was a lot of fun. Yeah. In retro, I got to play against a Asui Free that was playing Crow and Frog, Dark uh, Black Abyss, Dark Shadow Ruin, and City Rampage. Right. Yeah. I mean, Crow and Frog is a bit much. Yeah. Still, like, wait, isn't Crow and Frog banned in retro? Is it? Oh, in retro, or is it just or is it just MHA only that is banned? In? I don't yeah, know. Might, if it's banned it in retro, I'm going to be MHA having only. I'm going to be having words. Yeah, it's I'm possible not, there's only MHA one. I, it's probably. It's, I mean, I don't know retro enough, but like, it's probably fine in retro, I guess. Yeah, maybe I'm imagine, maybe I'm imagining things. I can't argue. I was playing uh, Mina One Titans, and I got to Colossal Thermal Blast on turn two. <laughs> I was like, my first turn, I went, check, check, check. Oh, I checked a class four blast, discard, play it. There wasn't wasn't Adam playing Natali 2, so he could do that on turn one. Yeah. He was doing the same thing as me, but I wanted to I wanted to loop it, whereas he just wanted to play it once. Um, so to answer that, so Entwine, yes, uh, MHA1 is not in current rotation. Heroic format does not exist, right? There is not an official format no. for any of this. Heroic so format is want, a let's call it heroic, Whether you want to call it modern, whether you want to call it Spanish, whatever you want to call it, like it's just something I think some people have been trying. Certainly we've been doing it locally just as a way of going back and playing small cards of just everything sort of the the new era onwards. So that's MHA1 onwards. Everything's legal apart from Van Nest, right? So it's just a fan thing. But I could see it being something they maybe try officially at some point. I mean, Triple Threat was a fandom one created by Broberg that has got official support. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's there's legs there. I mean, they'll probably have to curate it a bit and they probably don't have the manpower to do that at the moment. But, like, maybe well, in let, the future, I think it might be a thing. We'll start to wrap up because it's getting quite late. Mm. 
But before we do get on, is there anyone particular in Critical Role that you ha- you hyped for on you think deserves a chrome? Scanlan. And for those Scanlan, in the okay. chat who are not aware, who is Scanlan and why does he deserve a chrome? He is the bard of Vox Machina. And he is the most glorious purple purple hand magic man that has ever existed. Uh, I'm currently listening to the podcast from like 10 years ago. Well, nine years ago at this point, 10 years ago when the set comes out. And at one point, they're taking on the Underdarks Dwarves. And there's one with a ma- full black plated armor with a flaming warhammer. And Scalin just goes, I open my hands up. I go, hey, buddy, it's been a while. Go over. And as I hug him, I cast Banishment and send him to an ethereal plane as long as I'm concentrating. Like, that's... That's genius. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, Scanlan is what made me fall in love with The uh, Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon. Uh, like, very much so. I'm going to watch the last three episodes because I didn't get to watch them because I was at regionals and I'm so very hyped for them. Uh, I, I watched them the day they came out. <laughs> I was not missing those. Uh, I am very, very excited. Yeah, Scanlon's absolutely great. Uh, at one point during like the, these these early, early stuff, he's like, can I inspire myself? I went, Rules is written, no, but because you're Scanlon, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I've got, I've, I've, I need to do a whole script like based on his speech as to why he deserves a chrome because he gave everything for that party. So I only know, only know the only know the series. I don't know anything about the actual critical role stuff because I just can't get into it. That's right. My friend Millie's a massive fan. They've done me like a whole little synopsis on the Mighty Nine, Hell's Bells, and Vox Machina crew. They're currently working on one for the villains for me, so I can try and work out who the boss battles are going to be, which has got to be Forax and. Uh, Fordak and Arfax as two of them easily. Oh, Fordax definitely got him involved. Um, but speaking of Mighty Nine, now that I uh, don't have to worry about you know the grind for the rest of the year, I can play. I can play some of my uh, all new Altar, not the Brave. You can. You're gonna play some fresh cut grass as well. Ah, uh, nah. <laughs> Nah, that's more that's more Rocco's wheelhouse than mine. That's right. right so I'm not very good at complimenting people, you see. And yeah, we've already found, we found out thanks to Gary that backhanded compliments don't count. <laughs> so I guess finally, uh, have you got any sort of shout outs or anything else you want to call out uh, before we toddle off? Uh, I mean, I I, I kind of made the I kind of shouted out most people I could think of earlier in the UK group, but. Shout out to Sean Johnson as always. You know he make without without him we don't have a game over here. No. Let's be real. He is the most important person in the game in this, and I am glad he got to play for once. I know he didn't quite get the results he was hoping for, but you know he enjoyed himself, and um, yeah, I'm just so grateful that we have him. A as a local, B as one of my oldest friends for over 21 years at this point and see just that you know he is who he is uh shout outs to patriot and sally for running the events this weekend they did a fantastic job um always always a pleasure to be you know i know i know it's a bit i know it's a bit you know it's my local so i'm gonna i'm gonna you know it's, it's a pretty great store but you know it really is like one of the best spaces for gaming that i have been to in the country and i can't no, you know i can't it, knock it. it really is oh no can't knock, can't knock the staff in the slightest did you know sean dodged the singing of happy birthday uh i did not but his no. birthday isn't until uh it's thursday been, yeah, so so uh, richard isn't aware of this but basically uh aaron winter winter who's one of my locals had their birthday last week it was card goblin's birthday on the saturday of regionals as well as Richard who runs Card Goblin. It was it's Sean's coming up. It was Steve Claxo and Sam Tate's uh, Sam Turner, sorry, on the Thursday beforehand. So we I got a Sally begrudgingly 
uh, announced that and then got me to start everyone singing happy birthday and sean and sam turned out outside like uh, just outside the sort of uh other access area to the main play area and heard everyone singing and went fuck that i'm staying outside (laughs) 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 it came in after it was done (laughs) yeah i mean i guess obviously shout outs to like all my locals who helped me test uh specifically you know ben liam uh greg jonathan i know they're not technically local but i've always considered the donny group part of us and i hope they consider us part of them greg is an honorary local since he's been to our events as often as he has and we've been to the his um i mean he's he's traveling two and a half hours for your pre-release uh i don't know is he Apparently, yeah, you know, he didn't know it was this Saturday, this Sunday, and then when he found out, he's I think he's planning on training it down. Ah, so, yeah, cool. Um, shout out to, obviously, the Dobbers uh, for, you know, setting up the streets and UK versus, of course, for, you know, wanting to stream. But we know that didn't work out the way we would have hoped it would. No, um, we'll, get, we'll get the videos out, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have more, I have more faith in UK versus doing it than the Dobbers since we're still waiting on regional videos from last year from them. Yeah, I asked Murray for the game I played for us to commentate, but if Murray just wants, if Murray's happy to just ship everything over to me, I'll cut it down and get it out to commentary. I'm more than happy with that, and then yeah. we can put it out on both channels. I'm not that bothered by that. I think part of the issue is they're they're quite perfectionist and they yeah. really want to get yeah, it. There isn't that much. And we'll that just get our video shit. It. Murray, Murray, Scott, and Matt worked very hard to make sure there was not much I actually need to do into these videos afterwards. The app that they were using for universities.cards was linked to the stream overlay, so the health totals automatically updated on the stream. There's not much that I actually need to do into it. It just needs kind of cutting down. Uh, if people are coming to you, you don't need to worry about audio. So it's literally just someone needs to go through like the 10 hours of stuff and just basically cut out the chaff yeah yeah uh obviously thanks to all the judges mm. you know if they if they don't judge someone else would have to and you know i'm too lazy to learn the rules yeah big um, shout out to scott for learning video ninja in a leicester we can get it all up on there whilst also still playing guilty guest drive <laughs> <laughs> yeah um Special, special, special thanks to Rocco because, as I say, I've played more against him over the last few months than anybody else. Uh, and he has constantly stopped me from playing numerous decks that I thought would be good enough just because Big Cat said, uh, and keeping you humble in Swiss as well. Oh, uh, yeah, but that's I mean, technically, it's just revenge for me beating him at the last regional, I guess. Um, Shout outs to UVS Games for uh, paying me faster than they paid any of the original winners and they in the EU. <laughs> I want to know if Tim Key from Broberg also got a notification with their player cards on it. They'd have to. I think they have to. They have to. It has to be. I know, I know uh, Greg, Greg waited about two months for his and I got mine on one day. <laughs> oh, I think probably Greg had to wait for the no code to get back and then recover and then do all his other work while it's like he yeah. was already at his computer ready to go as soon as he knew who they were it was like boom done let's go oh, I, see. Hi. Well, then I, guess uh, we I think can... the last shout out is really to all the stars that you've gone through throughout the last year earning points to get to Worlds and then you just go and win a regional yeah, I'm currently sat at 137 points. Like, well, this was worthwhile. I mean, <laughs> it, it could that that could have been what helped you win the regional. Uh, I mean, well, getting 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 beaten up by like everyone at different locals. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love I love tra- I love traveling for the game anyway. Like, even if it wasn't like you know all about you know it wasn't all about points to me. It was just you know. <laughs> traveling with people and you know spending a day out at a different store and you know getting to know people who i would only see maybe once twice a year otherwise things like that like, with down here, there we go. 
Well, you know, uh, I mean, he didn't have a great experience the last time he traveled like south of the middle. What? Last time he came, last time he traveled south was Bristol, wasn't it? No, no, no. We we done the uh, we did uh, Norwich at the start of the year. I'm mean, going right. to see if Norwich um, is further south than Bristol, but yeah, last, I'm not sure. last, last time they you came to Bristol, it wasn't the best experience. <laughs> Liam no, still, right. Liam's still right. not got his promos from that apparently. Yeah, neither have I. It's funny. <laughs> I did, but yeah. they knew I could drive there and complain at them. Yeah, no, I you know it was a, it was not it was an all right day. It was just uh, long. But yeah, no, I, as I say, I, I I'll travel anywhere Ben's happy to travel. It's some good practice for next year, and hopefully we've got. A couple. We've got one star in Wales interested, so we might get another star in Wales interested. So we can do some technically international traveling as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've got Isla Isla Wise got events oh, now. Yeah, we? I I haven't told you. I think I told you just about this, but yeah, I was just going through UGN. And there's like a, a regular Sunday meeting of they they have a league, and I think they've got a pre release of about seven or eight so, people in the Isla White. And the Isle of Wight is only a hundred and fifty thousand people on it in itself, so that that's that's a hell of a player base. I mean, they've got um, two local qualifiers this season as well. Have they? Yeah, yeah. I, I was can't... going through it. Early. I was going through them all earlier just to you know see what what was uh, doable for the season. If it's after the eighteenth, I might have to pop down, but I don't think there will be. Uh, I mean, Sean's already updated the Google Doc, so you can find out. I'll have to take a look. Robin is away from this Sunday to the 18th in Canada, so I don't get to. I get to chill out with a little man, uh, not do any LQs. But yeah, if you, yeah, John's already asking. John's already asking if you're going to the Isle of Wight LQ. <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't think Ben will drive that far. Ah, oh, I bet he would. I bet he wouldn't. You're going to go on a ferry. It'd be great. Yeah, I'd probably puke everywhere. <laughs> um, I get seasick. <laughs> as long as you're not seasick in the car, it's fine. Yeah, but I'm still on the sea. <laughs> I mean, technically, we're on the sea now. We're an island. <sighs> <sighs> and on that, we will uh, wrap things up. Yes, we will. Um, so, yeah, obviously, as usual, thank you to everyone in chat. Uh, for chatting along with us and uh, obviously if you're watching this on YouTube thank you very much for watching um, obviously do all the things like comment, subscribe come check us out on twitch.tv slash UK versus um, and obviously yeah thanks very much to, to Mike for joining us and, and once again congratulations on proving that you are no longer washed up officially yeah we'll see you at Nats where you'll be watching me like a hawk for any kind of rules infraction to immediately get me DQ'd well, I haven't, I haven't confirmed I'm, I'm judging yet. It's just looking that way, you know, doing Sean a favour because he thinks he's going to struggle for judges. I Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, apart from Murray, I think everybody wants to play and try and get to Worlds. Yeah, I know uh, Sam Sam said he was happy to judge again. Greg's looking at doing it. So, so we ended up with an OCE OC situation where the previous champs are just going to go around judging. Well, I mean, I'm sure Murray will still judge, you know, he's... He's yeah. too scared to get. He's too scared to get back in the arena. I, I I don't think he's scared. I think it's a mercy to the rest of us. No, he's he's too scared. Uh, we, we were talking about this at the food cart on Sunday, and he was just saying that he's having so much fun watching players grow and actually get involved with the game and seeing how people are adapting it. If he was playing, it would reduce how much he actually gets to see from the games that are going on. Yeah, that sounds like an excuse. He's too scared. I just think there hasn't been anything enough to interest him. I mean, we've got Guilty Gear for Scott. We've got Yu Hakusho, which brought Big Cat back, which was also for Scott. We just need to tap into what Murray loves. And I think Street Fighter is one of those ones. So if we can get some more Street Fighter stuff, we might tempt him back in. No, he's too scared. <laughs> he's just too scared. He's too scared. I don't want to get beat up by me again. We need to clip that and we need to send it to Murray and then he's just going to like force you into a one-on-one -on -one situation. Murray's a chicken and he won't 1v1 me. <laughs> I play Murray. Murray is very good and very scary at this game. He kicked my butt as boat on. But we'll let you get off, Mike. Huge shout for me in it and we'll catch you in a bit.
No worries. Thanks for having me. Bye. Toodles. Bye.